Miss Jody here with a second video, I guess third video for this chapter, I'm trying to put them all together um, so that we can just finish out chapter 15. I'm making that the last chapter uh, for us of taking notes and you can finish chapter 16 on your own, which is oxidation and reduction. Um, since we've kind of been dragging along here a little bit with our separation. Now, don't forget to, for this last note page, to still be taking your notes on a half sheet so I can glue them in in your journal underneath the label. And um, we'll still try to get together, hopefully, but you know my spiel there. All right, so last but not least, acid-base equilibrium. And so what is that? Well, um, now that we're understanding the equilibrium side of things, we have a few uh, things to focus on. First of all, equilibrium, the fact that the, re the reactions are going to eventually come to a point where the forward and the reverse reaction are going to be at the same rate and they're going to create the chemical equilibrium in the closed system. Um, if you don't want that to happen, then of course there's the idea of Le Chatelier's principle where you can stress the system. You can force it to stay out of balance. All of our um, law, it seems, in, in chemistry here with this idea is that all things are moving towards balance. And so if you don't want the balance because you want to make more products or whatever, you stress the system. We talked about that in the last video using the idea of <coughs> changing the concentration, changing the pressure for some of them, only the the gases are gonna really work with that one, and um, changing the temperature. So that's going to be something that we can do to stress the system. The last part of the equilibrium <coughs> is the idea of the acid-base side of um, equilibrium. Now what that has to do with is the idea that we have the um, acid-base world, and we can you know, talk about the particular um, reactions here with the acids giving up their their um, donating obviously the H plus donators that we've talked about before when we did acid base reaction and how this all links to the equilibrium side all right so if we go back and we think about the acid base reactions if you remember um, so like HCl here react uh, acting as the acid here in um, aqueous solution, so he's gonna be the donator of the H plus, and then we have the OH negative, which will be the base, which will be the acceptor, and then you have the rest of your reaction up here. And so when we learned about this, we, we were able to figure out who is the acid, who is the base, and all that, so we know the basics of that. But the other side of it is the idea that when it comes to acids and bases, there is a category of what we call strong acids, weak acids, and there's a reason for that. We're just normally used to saying, oh, this is a really strong acid, or oh, this is a really weak acid, but there's way more to it. The idea is linked to what we call the acid ionization reaction. And so that is when we have what we call step one of this situation when this has to begin to break apart so that the acid can be the donator of the H pluses. So when we study this as a whole, when we were just learning acid-base reactions, we didn't really focus on certain steps as in the sense we didn't say, step one, the HC has to, the H has to break away and this has to be, become the H plus and then the CL negative. We, we, we did that, but we kind of wrote them underneath there. You know, we put the H's and the C's and we said, okay, where's the H going to go? Oh, the H is going to go over here. The, the H plus is going to leave here, make this a negative CL. It's going to come over here and the H plus is going to bond up here with the OH and create a water molecule. So we learned all that, but it's not like we sat down and we said, okay, step one, break apart the H, you know, and then step two. Um, but that's what we were really doing when we, we would do these on the board. So with that step one of the H breaking off of this, leaving behind its electron and creating a CL negative here, um, this is what we call the acid ionization reaction. And so it's a specific um, reaction with this acid-based world that is creating the ion, the ionized, the charged up side of the H pluses and the CL. 
And so in some substances, it's really easy for the H's to, to come off of there, you know, uh, to separate. And in other substances, it's not as easy for the H's to separate. And so this is where the categories of strong versus weak acid come into play. And it has to do with linking to the chemical equilibrium side. And so um, let's first look at the strong acid world. Okay, so strong acid, it's an acid, it's, I'm sorry, strong acid, it's acid ionization, that means step one, um, reaction nearly goes to completion. When a solution of HCl is made, nearly all of the molecules break into H plus and CLs. Therefore, we never bother to write the reaction as an equilibrium. So what happens, so what they're saying is if it's a very, very strong acid, that means so many of them, I mean, the moment you, you start um, having the, the reaction, like however much you have of that concentration, the H's are just, um, they break apart just very easily, like almost all of them, you know? So you have the majority of them that actually break apart and um, create this, this breaking to form the new things. So it's very strong. Now, because of that, the reaction nearly goes all the way to completion. Like the, if we did the chart of equilibrium, it would be the forward reaction and the product reaction, and it would, it would eventually get to that equilibrium state because we said they all get to that. But it's so heavily weighed to the product side, meaning that they, there's so many things, so many of them break apart, so so many things are able to form on the product side. So like it said, when a solution is made, nearly all of its molecules break into H plus and Cl. Therefore, we never bother to write the reaction as an equilibrium because you, you, you sort of know that it eventually becomes an equilibrium situation, but the majority of the time, you'll just write it like this with the arrow going that way because the majority of the time, so much of this breaks apart and you're, you have the product side being of the stronger. Weak acid. So if you're weak acid, here's what happens. It does not produce many H pluses. So that means not many of the molecules of the H that's on this side are going to break apart and become H plus, leaving their electron behind. So it doesn't produce many H plus ions during the acid ionization reaction. So for its step one reaction, the first part of breaking apart, it doesn't produce as many. So therefore we'd call it a weak acid because it doesn't produce as many. So if you don't produce as many, that means not many H's break off. In the end, you don't have as many products with that H, right? So this, they give an example. So um, acidic acid. So here's acidic acid. You have two carbons, four hydrogens, two oxygens, right? And there's the sign of equilibrium. Why? Because you've got an H plus coming off of here. That's one of the four. Okay, see H, there's four of them. One of that. Look what's the product on of the rest of it. CH3. See the three? So not all of the H's came flying off of here. So this is instead of here, so many of them come off, making a strong acid, only a few um, or in this case, one is going to come off. And so this reaches e equilibrium after only a few products are formed because it's not breaking down each one of these and making a whole bunch of products. It's basically going to become in its equili equilibrium state when there's only a few products. So if there's only a few products that are formed, then it, this reaction is leaning more towards the reactant side because not a lot of products formed in it. It doesn't mean it didn't happen, it didn't work, but not as many as something in this situation where it's a strong acid. So it reaches equilibrium after only a few products form. Okay, so here's the idea. The value of the equilibrium constant if, if it's larger, so when we're calculating, still the same thing, we're doing the um, calculations with the, um, trying to find the, the K, okay? So when we have the value of the equilibrium constant larger, then it's a stronger acid. If it's smaller, it's a smaller number, it's a weaker acid. If it's smaller than one, then is equal to a really weak acid. Okay, so you have like a like a back and forth, um, you know, from stronger to weaker kind of category there. Okay, so um, this one, or, or in the second page of this, is going to give us some ideas of what 
what they're talking about here. So the acid ionization constant. What that means is like we had, we said that this reaction right here is which we would call step one, which we never really noticed it as being anything, you know, fabulous or whatever. We just know they would break apart and form here. Um, that step one has its own real term, the acid ionization reaction. That's what that step one is. So because it's so important to determining the weak and strong side of the acid world, it gets its own um, uh, equilibrium constant with the little a there. Okay, so that A is gonna be the acid ionization constant. So you're still doing the same thing. You're still calculating with your products um, or your reactants on the bottom and your products on the top in brackets for concentration, still putting the, the um, little number up here that is the actual original coefficients from your formula. And um, so same thing, but you have that little A there. So the acid ionization constant, it's the equilibrium constant for an acid ionization reaction. Same thing, just new little A there, guy. Okay, so what that does is that helps us. The strength of an acid means how many H plus it makes in, its, in an aqueous solution, a dissolved in water solution. So when we are looking at that, and again, they're still all going to get to equilibrium, but the idea is how we would write them because if they weigh more towards the product side or they weigh more towards the reactant side, um, this is also, those link, those things are linked to the strong and the weak side of the acid world. So this is why as, this acid base topic has to go under equilibrium because that's how we figure out whether it's strong or whether it's weak. It's all about how the reaction weighs at the point of equilibrium, more towards the product and more towards the reactant. All right, so strength of an acid, how many H plus it makes in an aqueous solution. With this, we've created, not we as in me, but... Um, smart people before me, um, created pH scale, SPL, Sorensen, I think that's how you pronounce it, Sorensen, I don't know, a Danish biochemist. Um, in 1909, he created the system, and he called it Pauvier dehydranin. So that's supposed to be French, and it's probably terrible pronunciation, but you know, you, you miss my pronunciations, don't you? Um, so, um, which means power of hydrogen. And so this pH scale, we've talked about the pH scale when we were learning acid-based reactions, but the idea, this is taking it a little farther. Now that we understand that the strong side of acids versus the weak side of acids go together with the idea of chemical equilibrium and whether it's weighed towards one side or the other. Okay, so the pH scale gets more gets more interesting. And we've talked about this power of hydrogen, the power of those H pluses, right? So the strength is how many H pluses it makes. So if it's a really strong acid, it's going to give up more of those H's. It's going to go through that, that reaction, um, that acid ionization reaction, and give it nearly all to completion, giving up its H's. And so down here, we've got 0 through 14. This is sort of how it works. So we have from 0, a lot of H plus ions. So if you're all the way down here, then your reaction is going to be giving up, making a lot of those H plus ions. So there's a lot of breaking apart, leaving that electron behind and moving over to the, H, the ionic world. Um, and that will be strongly acidic if you're all the way down here. And this really strongly acidic is only from 0 to 1.9. So if you're saying, oh, this, this acid is strongly acidic, you're from 0 to 1.9. And then there's from 2, point, or 2 to 6.9, we would call weakly, uh, weak, weak acid or weakly acid, strongly, ac strongly acidic. I'm sorry, weakly acidic. There we go. Uh, weakly acidic. So um, that's a huge category compared to this, right? Now, we do have to know that when it comes to the pH scale, every number you move up is a certain uh, number of um, uh, category where it's going tenfold the change in the solution. So if from one to two is tenfold that amount, and then from two to four would be 100. Do you see what I'm saying? So... Actually, I noted that here. So every unit change of pH, there is a tenfold change in the solution. So for example, pH 3 is 10 times more acidic than pH 4. And then from pH 4 is 100 times, or pH 3 is 100 times more acidic than pH 5, right? And so that means because it's lower on the scale, it's 
it gets more acidic as it goes this direction. So if you go from a five to a three, it's a hundred times more acidic. So each time you go from one, you've got that power of 10. So from two to 6.9, I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of dissolved, or that's a lot of those H plus. And the farther you're getting on this end, the more H pluses you have. And that's going to be um, creating uh, a substance to be strongly acidic when it gets to the list level. Weakly acidic and strongly acidic. All right, now obviously seven is neutral. And then if you go the opposite way, it works in the same way as it did here with the acids. From 7.1 to 12, you will be weakly basic. Basic, uh, yeah, basic. So um, this is strongly acidic, weakly acidic, weakly basic. Um, and then if you get all the way to the end here from 12.1 to 14, um, there's a lot of OH ions. So that when you get from seven on here, now you're talking about the concentration of the OH ions instead, the basic side of things. And you will be strongly basic if you are 12.1 to 14. So this increases our understanding of the pH scale. And again, this topic has to go into this category because simply it is a chemical equilibrium. And of course, all the um, experiments that you do with chemical equilibrium, they're all either acid-base ones or Leitchetler's principle. So I'll be attaching some experiments that I would have loved for us to do together, and I'll leave some spots in our journal just in case, um, but you can maybe perform a couple of these at home, um, but some of them that are more complicated, obviously you can't, you'll just have to watch the videos, um, but to give us some ideas on how this applies to the actual physical experimenting work world in for chemistry. All right, so that's the last video, um, and that finishes up chapter 15. And then um, chapter 16, like I said, is oxidation reduction, and I'm not going to do videos on that one because I know we're running out of time here. We're past our time, actually, but I wanted to finish up since we were behind. And hopefully uh, you're doing okay with keeping up, and I know it's a little harder in this online platform, and um, so I guess we do the best we can. And I'm still putting blank test in the end of the chapters for our journals that you can, once I get everything set out, you can pick those journals up if we're not able to meet. And then you can practice some of those, um, those quizzes at home to uh, prepare for the final exam. Okay, and I will be eventually attaching the final exam and I hope that uh, you, we will be together maybe um, to do some experience before that so we can prep up for that and if not you might just have to do it at home with your own book and um, study up and, and see how you do. Okay, miss y'all.